All right, guys, today we're going to be talking a little bit about user permissions, group permissions, ownership, and I'm going to take advantage of this moment to show you an exploit, and it's going to allow me to gain root privileges on my Linux system. Now, one of the issues with Linux is it has gotten bloated in a lot of cases. Now, what we're looking at right here code that is written in C that is going to exploit some of the running privileges of a binary on Linux. Now, I think the best way to learn is through an example. And so we're going to go over some of this and user privilege escalation at the same time. And then I'm also going to explain, you know, what are user privileges, group privileges, ownership of files, permissions. So this is going to be an introduction to all of that because I think it all fits together pretty well. And I know a lot of people are new to Linux and I want to kind of cover everything I can on it. We're going to compile this GCC and then we're going to do that output and we're going to call it the same thing. That's going to compile it. Now it has a binary Okay, so now we see this right here. Now if I do ls list minus l, l flag, and then I look at that, and what we see here is an executable, and what we see in the beginning here is the owner of the file. Here is who owns the file. It is owned by username user, just happens to be the username I created, something nice and generic. And this on the other side is the group ownership. There are instances like this where some of that user privilege and some of them require to be executed as root in order to perform their job, like say, you know, change your password. Let's go ahead and execute the exploit code here and watch what happens. First off, let's see what per privilege level I'm running at right now. So right now I'm running as a regular user, okay? So when you type ID, you see your current running privileges. If I execute this right here, it takes advantage of Polkit, which needs to run with some root level privileges. So go, let's go ahead and execute it. And as easy as that, we have what is now typing ID again, we have a root shell. So at this point I could do RM minus RF slash and I could remove my whole root file system. It is an example of privilege escalation. One of the most common ways that an attacker will gain root on your Linux system. You can take a look over here, picture of a password file, which is the slash etc slash passwd file. Now, nowadays Linux uses a shadow file, so the actual hash is not in that file, but you do still have the existence of the username. So you can see each user, you can see each user's user ID. So that's all numerical. So with root, you'll see a UID of zero, a user ID level of zero, which is the highest level on your system. And then you'll see to the right of that, you'll see the GID or the group ID, and you'll also see the working directory, which is like the home directory where the user has their own virtual space on the system. And this is a pretty important exploit because of the fact that so many Linux systems are vulnerable to it, where we just saw how easy it was to execute it and get a root shell. And at that point, they could have access to your entire system. It's important to understand how the Linux system is put together in order to better restrict things. The D here, that stands for directory. This one doesn't have a D, so it's not a directory. So you have the next three, read, write, execute. R for read, W for write, X for execute where we see these minuses here. That means there is no execute privileges there by the owner there. Now, down here, we do see the allowance. Now, this is everyone else. So what we see here is 
the other people can't actually write to these files here that we see on the right hand side. So we have the W missing. That's what that dash means. The dash means there is no write privileges by other users there. But they can read it, they can execute it in that case here. But over here, they can't execute it or write to it. Now let's go ahead and restrict from the exploit we just took advantage of. So we'll do chmod. Now chmod is how you change and modify you know, the privileges and the permissions for users, groups, and everyone else. So we'll do 0755, and then we will paste that, but we're going to need to use super user privileges in order to do that. Okay, we have just changed the permissions. Let's go ahead and take a look at that once again. Okay, now what, what are we going to do? We're going to try to run that exploit once again. Okay, we're going to execute it as a normal user once again, and we'll see if we get that root shell once again. Let's try it out. Okay, look. As you can see, because we changed the permissions, we restricted it. We were able to prevent that root shell exploitation. And so this is the basic introduction to users, groups, and your privileges on your system. Now, when you do ls with the l flag, as we see here, we'll be able to list the current level of privileges for each file. And by changing those permissions, by restricting, by doing things like chmod minus x, which is going to take away execution privileges from file.c. So we have that as an example. We can do chmod minus w. It's another easy way to restrict something so it can't be modified. So, for example, if someone's able to modify your dot profile in your home directory, they could have your account actually execute something. It could bring up a false super user login where you might type in your password and it may send that out somewhere. Achieve privilege escalation and how other users may try to do that. So if you share user accounts on your Linux system, don't feel too safe because certain situations like this with things like Polkit, you're going to have to worry about other users being able to do privilege escalation themselves. So that's what I have today, guys. Just wanted to do that introduction, talk a little bit about that current vulnerability. I'll leave some links so you can read more about it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll be back later with more on Linux.